Numa, Breath of Life, Spirit, Soul. Hey guys, I'm LB, and, uh, the first episode of this series was lost to the sands of time because this game is really difficult to record for some reason, and I didn't know until it was too late that the entire first episode was basically just kaput. And then the following episodes, they're watchable, but the quality is terrible. Yeah, it's- it's not good, so I am re-recording this first episode, but the following episodes will be low quality, but they will be blind. So yeah, let's- let's get started. This is a game that I heard about because of the Turing test. In the Turing test, there is an easter egg for this game, and that's because some of the developers that worked on this game also worked on the Turing test. At least, that's my understanding of it. And, uh, there's actually a lot of stuff in this game that you can see carried over into the Turing test. It's really cool. Definitely check out my Turing test playthrough or play the game yourself. It's a puzzle game, first-person puzzle game, just like Portal 2. This game, however, is more of a first-person walking simulator with very, very light puzzles. So, let's go ahead and get started. There is narration from, I guess, somebody who's trying to be comedian. Uh, the comedy doesn't really sit well with me, but I'll let you judge it for yourself. Let's just get started with a new game. In the beginning? Me! I, I, I'm awake! I'm alive! I can feel it! Life flowing through me, breath, thought! A few seconds ago there was nothing, but now here I am! Well, there's only one logical conclusion. I am God, and, and this is my universe. It's pretty cool. But it's too dark and silent, formless and void. Not fitting for God of my stature. Let there be light! Okay, Wheatley. Oh, and there was! Oh! <laughs> wow! Oh, I must be God! I can move! I can, I can talk! I can walk! I hover to and fro above the infinite surface! Not plain as it is! So yeah, look at the graphics in this game. I have them turned down to low settings, but they still look amazing. Look at this. This is amazing! Indeed. My universe! Your universe. A plan, but a bland universe is better than no universe. Still, I feel the need for progress. I need a direction. I need a destination. An end to my beginning. An omega to my alpha. But how can there be progress without a destination? So if any of you have seen my Turing test videos, this is- should be very familiar. This is the first part of the easter egg that was in the Turing test. Works just like this, except you're controlling one of the Tom robots in that easter egg. This is different though. Aha! A path! A narrow path that leads to a destination! Progress! It's a very neat effect, I really like it. Ah, before me I see a large wall. I press on, and walk through the wall like a ghost. Nope, walls are solid, can't do that. Note to self, cannot walk through walls. A button! Push the button, escape the box. I control the world with a wave of my figurative hand. Oh, dear God, I have no need for hands, apparently. So, there is a pedestal button here, so you might think that this game has some puzzles, but it doesn't. Trust me, it doesn't. <laughs> There's not much to spoil in this game. You know, something to spruce the place up a bit. Make my universe heavenly. Something to reflect my wealth and godlike status. Grand. It needs... Uh, color. Gold! Lo lots of gold! To reflect my immense wealth, an abundance of goldness. Also to reflect my love of reflective metals. Whoa! Okay, that's it. A temple. That's the right kind of place for a god to live. This is another really cool effect. The way it, like, drains and fills the colors and shading and all that. Lots of cool effects. And the architecture very much reminds me of the game Echo by Ultra Ultra. If you haven't seen that game, it's a stealth game. And, uh, it has very similar architectural design and, and color choice and all that. It's very neat. If I bend my figurative knees and jump, the world moves downwards, away from me. The center of my own little universe. I translate the world as if it were mine. Well, yeah, which it is. So this is another thing that I noticed was directly brought into the Turing test. 
I must continue to progress, in spite of this challenge to my authority. Yeah, yeah, hush, hush. So in the Turing test, you can you can click on stuff to interact, and then you move the mouse to, to like, have a direct one-to-one -one mapping with what you're moving, but in this game, it's my movement keys that directly one-to-one -one map to what I'm moving. So a similar concept, just a different implementation in the Turing test. Pretty neat. As I move forward, the world approaches me. I am literally the center of the universe. As I turn, the world rotates around me. I am pivotal. I bring a new meaning to self-centered. You know, what with being the center of all things. This should also be familiar if you've seen the Turing test. There was a, there was a puzzle in the Turing test that looked very similar to this. Slightly different, but very similar. So basically, we just run around here, or actually walk rather, because the movement speed is extremely slow. So we just walk over here and push these buttons, rotate the bridge, straight forward. I need to define my influences. Who are my influences? Well, myself. I inspire myself. I am inspirational. I aspire to be myself. So my friend Vert plays games. He played this game before me, and he he warned me that the narration would get very annoying very quickly. I managed to last through it the first time I played, but now that I'm replaying the game, I can see now that it is indeed a bit obnoxious. But you know, it's not. They don't expect you to be a let's player when you're playing this game. They just expect you to be somebody who's going to walk through the game while somebody's narrating to you. So yeah, if I stop talking, it's because he started talking. Matched. Perfectly. Now I can relax. Thinking time is over. I do like this effect that we see right now. This is another part of the Turing Test Easter egg. This this should Lead also look familiar path. as well. Lead me to my destination. Onwards! A passing gate is a sign of progress along my path. I must admit that I rather enjoy the progress. However, it seems I am met with a new challenge at every turn. These challenges require knowledge. Slightly worrying. As a god, I consider myself all-knowing. Why is it I must stop and think? Knowledge is obscured from me. All these eyes watching makes me a bit uneasy. Not a fan of onlookers, to be honest. That which I can see exists. So yeah, with these eyes, the way they work is that they are activated if you can see the pupil of the eye, and they are not activated if you can't see the pupil of the eye. This this game advertises itself as being sort of philosophical, but, I mean, it's just very, very light on the philosophy side. It's, it's more of, like, creative liberties with it. And I thought that they would do some really cool mechanics with this, but instead, as you'll see in the later episodes, they did not really go all out with this, with this mechanic. A bench. Brilliant. Something to rest my figurative head upon from all that adventurous walking. But I must be honest with myself. As a god, I feel no real need to rest. I don't know why I made a bench. Doesn't really make sense. Maybe I should rest as an example to others. That... Uh, no, there are no others. This is also very familiar from the Turing test. Now this... This structure here, and also this here, this reminds me of the Talos Principle. I don't know about you guys, but something about that is uniquely Talos. Maybe it's just this era of architecture that games try to capture and they both do similar things with it. But man, I love the way this looks. The the decoration here, the ribbons, it's all very beautiful. Very good looking game. It's a shame that the gameplay doesn't quite match up to the looks. I don't understand why I filled the place with pots either. I don't have anything to store. Maybe I should make lemonade. I need to invent lemons first, a few other things too. Time to start a list of inventions. Lemons, a lemon press, sugar, the abstract concept of sweetness, a tongue. I definitely need a tongue, but I need a body first. Legs, I want legs. Then I can have footsteps to accompany my walking. I find myself awfully ethereal currently, even for a god. So, what I'm wondering is this guy, you know, supposedly popped into existence. How does he know what lemons are, but then also realize, like, not know what other things are? And, like, he needs a body. Yeah, we don't have a body, but it's kind of weird. Like, he, he knows things and then doesn't know other things, and it's really confusing. Like, I don't really know what they were going for with that. And at the it's ending, it just completely unravels. Watched. Yet more evidence of my centrality to this narrative. It makes me wonder what is in the next room before I enter. Is there anything? Is it simulated? Is it culled because my mind does not have the power to imagine the whole world at one instant? Oh, for the sake of sanity, I choose to believe the world around the corner exists. 
can't jump over the railing, unfortunately. I have tried. Oh, you can? What? I totally tried that the first time. I totally tried jumping over the railing multiple times in my first playthrough. But I guess you can, after all. Aha! Uh -huh. There it is! Hiding. And I'm afraid not even you could escape my powers of observation. So yeah, that eye opens this door. Alright, get ready for more Tolkien. Wow! So many books, years of reading! But why would God read books that he's written? Then again, books written by God would be the best books. Why, why would I read books that I haven't written? I should write my own book, a book set apart from the rest. I wouldn't know what to call it. Autobiography, maybe. A brief history of life. Numa presents himself in Numa. Critics have called it the best book ever written. Winner of every writing prize for writing. The hallway called it the best book since records began. A small bench said it was a record-breaking record of historical records. Oh, I don't know what kind of book I would write if I didn't write an autobiography, though. Maybe uh, a piece of fiction. I could tell stories of magical doors that only open when watched. Maybe stories about a little wooden boy come to life. Maybe I'd write science books. As the creator of the universe, I could easily write an exhaustive science textbook. I mean, if I got something wrong, I could just change the rules of the universe to match the book. I could keep changing the laws of the universe and write new revisions. I could write every book on the face of the universe. There's still every book to write, and forever to write it in! <laughs> Some of it's a little funny, but, uh, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think, because uh, for, for me, it doesn't quite hit with me. The comedy doesn't quite work. Anyway, that's the solution. Dragged out, book got shelf out, and we can back through the door. Notice how things further away seem smaller. An increase in distance causes a decrease in size. That's called perspective. Called perspective. The irony is the implication. I must be the biggest thing in the world. <laughs> I guess that's one way to look at it. So yeah, it took me forever when I was first playing. I was looking all the way around this room trying to figure out what to do. I couldn't see any way to interact with these pillars. And, uh, as you can see, they have holes in them. And then I noticed over here, hidden in the corner, is a lever. And if you raise it all the way up, it's- it's too high. Gotta go down to about, like, that height, approximately. Also, the lighting in this game does weird things where it just gets darker for no reason. So there you go. That seems to work. Accidentally blocked into the load trigger by mistake. But that works, I guess. Where did all this marble come from? Because it's just here. I guess as God, I made it. I can't remember ever making any of this, though. Marble requires great heat, pressure, and time to form. So how did I make it? Did I just pop it into existence? I guess I could do that. Or did I have it in another universe cooking for a couple of million years? Uh, both are reasonable. Maybe both. Changing it up. I need to work on my memory. Look at this! The world bends to my will. More evidence of my deity, the immense power of my mind. Bow before my ample brow, for I can move things with just a glance. Fear my gaze, lest I move you around. So yeah, with that, it basically moves when you're looking at it, in unison with you. So you just look at it, back up, then look away and move towards it and back up again. Pretty straightforward. This door does not open, to my knowledge. There's also collectibles in this game, and unfortunately I don't know where the ones are that I found in the first episode, and I can't find a way to reset the collectible progress, so... Yeah, there's little red eyes that are laying on the floor, and you look at them, and it gives you achievement progress. There's eight total, and I didn't find all of them. That door it's opens when looked at, door. and that one closes when looked at. Opening itself upon my approach. The right way to treat your god door, I shall give you great treasures for your compliance. This door? What a conniving door. You can see its proud look as it attempts to thwart me. Why can't you be more like that other door? That other door had respect. At least I think this one opens when you're looking away from it. That I shall walk through this door with head held high. 
That's how it worked first time. Oh, well, now it's... Right, right, this one synchronizes with your movement for some reason. And that's another issue, is that there's no way to tell from just looking at the eyes which way they'll behave. Because some of them, some of them do different things despite looking identical. It's I have confusing. bested you, door. But yeah, basic anti-chamber stuff. What? Did that just pop in? Even though I'm very much near it, I could have sworn that popped in. Anyway, very lovely art style. Are you not moved? Rotate about me, bridge. Bow to my rotational power. <laughs> this is normal. Moving things with your mind. It must be. I am normal. That cannot be contested. Normal is the norm, and as the only thing, I must be normal. There we go. One issue with doing things based on where you're looking is that it means that much of the time is spent looking away from things. And, uh, when you have to look away from stuff in a first-person game, it's a I am bit mighty. tedious. I rather enjoy moving heavy marble with my mind. It would be a tough job to move this marble by hand, to be honest. What, what are hands? See? He knows what lemons are, but not what hands are, which is really confusing. I can move bridges with my mind. I wonder if I could move them to laughter or tears. Here's where one of the collectibles was. Dead. But with enough anthropomorphism, I'm sure they would lighten up. Thank you, Bridges, for bringing things together. I wonder if these Bridges deserve my thanks. If they're my creation, is to thank them to thank myself. Hmm. Well, thank me for my excellence. So yeah, this guy doesn't seem to be completely sure whether or not he's God or not, so yeah. That's- that's something to be concerned about. Is he actually God or not? I do like the architecture here. It is very, very nice. Which I've said multiple times now, but uh, yeah, there's not much to say. This world seems counterintuitive. Not entirely sure what's going on. I seem to be playing a series of practical jokes on myself. Who constructs a world like this? A world that attempts to confound me at every turn. Why did I make such a world? Makes me feel smart, I guess. How gratuitously self-indulgent. I hope the recording's turning out okay there, because that is seriously laggy. Holy crap. Something about that is incredibly laggy. There's nothing- nothing around here as far as I'm aware. So yeah, let's just carefully go back up here and be careful not to look... ...at the eye thing. And as I- as I said, it's a bit tedious when you have to look away from certain things. Hmm. Looks like we might actually be able to walk around the rim here, but I don't see any collectibles. Plus, sometimes there's just flat-out invisible walls, and you can't- you can't walk around the room like that, and come on- What is with the lighting in this game? Holy crap, it's so dark right now. <laughs> the lighting is bizarre. Also, the movement speed is incredibly slow. Alright, this is where I had a lot of fun in my original episode. <laughs> Get a load of this. The world turns about my pivot. Is it that the world turns around Whee. me, or that I turn around the world? <laughs> if it's just matrix multiplication, then the question is redundant, I'm sure. Cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. My conscious perspective makes it an incontrovertible fact that I am the center of the universe. So yeah, this is a lot of fun. See, it doesn't really matter too much where you stand on this, it always moves the right way, so to fix that, let's see, we, we want to orient ourselves like this, then look down. We want to move this one to jump to it, there we go. And we move this one around like that. Careful. It's very sensitive. Don't hurt its feelings, not that kind of sensitive. <laughs> do that, do that. There we go. 
and now we can move over here, and look away, yeah. So stuff like this could be neat, but they don't really do more with it, like, this is the only room where you have this mechanic, unfortunately. The rest of the game just kind of does a whole bunch of different things, and most of them are not very good, in my opinion. As a god, I can turn any situation to my advantage. The rules of the universe are mine to write. Though, they are rather conventional at the moment. So here we're rotating the entire room. It's like one of those- one of those things you see on- on, uh, old mystery shows or whatever, where, like, the room rotates and it goes to a different door. I don't know how to explain it. I think there's also something like that in Harry Potter. Yep, there's the exit. Just gotta rotate a little bit more. Doesn't have to be perfect. And there's no- there's no other doorways, no secrets as far as I'm aware. You can see the old doorway right there. Pretty neat stuff. It's like, stuff like- stuff like this is neat. The whole rotating as you- as you rotate thing. Sanctorum. I never actually figured out what all the text in this game means, but there's lots of, you know, Latin and Greek text in this game. Every room of this world seems to be carefully crafted for me. A hidden hand woven through the fabric of the universe. A fingerprint everywhere. A different hidden hand guiding my footsteps. The laws unfold. Their origins a mystery. But why a mystery? Gods should know all things. So with these, they toggle every time you look away and look back, so you just basically gotta toggle them all into the on position. Like that. Gods are creators. I must have created this world. If not, why would the world have the appearance of craft? Perhaps as I speak, a subconscious part of me is busy making the next room. It is my world, after all. I must be working hard right now to build the next room, or perhaps my mind creates this appearance of order out of the noise. Right, so, this is where the original first episode ended off. We will continue here with very low quality video in the next episode, but it will finally be a blind playthrough again after that point. I'm sorry, this game is hard to record, as I've said before. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you all in another video. Goodbye!